start for Fidelis, widest of all. Battlebound also came away quite well, as well as All Is Yours. All Is Yours is the one who leads from uh, Battlebound. And um, here comes Iconic, is showing good speed in between runners. Urban Knight, the favorite, is against the fence and coming to join the issue. So it's Iconic, Urban Knight, All Is Yours. And uh, furthest in is Release the Beast as uh, they move up the back stretch, making their way to the 900 meter marker. And the favorite, Urban Knight, takes up the running, opens up by a length. In second spot is Icon, then comes Release the Beast. Back in fourth is All Is Yours. Then after All Is Yours is Battlebound. Then against the fence is uh, Heidi Sippy. That one is splitting horses at this time as they, they go to the 600 meter pool. And the leader is Urban Knight. The favorite is doing this very, very nicely indeed in the hands of Galvez. Leads by two and a half lengths. In second spot is Heidi Zippy. This one is coming on now. Back in third and losing ground is Iconic. Then comes All Is Yours and Battlebound. They turn into the home stretch and the one to catch is Urban Knight. The favorite has lengthened quite impressively. Opens up by eight good looking lengths at this time. In second spot is Heidi Sippy. Then comes Doctor of Merit is running on together with Spotted Eagle. But this race is all over as Urban Knight comes at the 100 meter marker all alone by about 12 lengths or maybe, maybe even more. Urban Knight scores and scores readily. In second spot is Heidi Zippy. Well, the margin of victory has given us eight and three quarter lengths. A lot has been said about this horse, Urban Knight had been very impressive at gallops and I think this performance was expected which is why she went off or he went off a three to two Urban Knight well ridden by Wilma Galvez or maybe I should say an armchair ride by Wilma Galvez there he is Heidi Sippy finished in second place Fidelis finished third and all is yours fourth now I want to say a word about uh, Fidelis which finished third uh, shot to the left of the rest of the field at the start was in dead last position at the bottom turn went extremely wide had to come back in and still finished in third place Fidelis was an impressive finisher as well not that we expected Fidelis to beat this urban knight who won it so handsomely but a great performance indeed owned by the Mohali stables trained by Glenn Mendez this one is by Urban King out of Select Princess which makes Urban Knight a half brother to the Derby winner Free Passage there is Glenn Mendez now, probably, he's lost Archangel to Derby duties and maybe he's got another good one in his hands in Urban Knight. This was impressive indeed from Urban Knight. Won it in 122.2. Now for one of the feature events on the day's card, the second feature, the Carib Bear Santa Rosa Dash, a Group 2 event. Nine of them before the start. A Crime of Passion is the youngster, the three-year-old, written by Brian Budram Singh. Sacred Trust, of course, uh, joint favorite. Or, in fact, the favorite, I should say, Sacred Trust. There is Ignition Coil. Uh, also in the lineup is uh, Intact, which is written by Antonio Whitehall. There is Wild Excitement. Signal Alert at 7 to 5. A lot is expected. Hasn't raced for a while. There is Quick City, written by Jonathan Grant, the young Barbadian. And there is King Whistler, Praveen Badri rides. Gabby's Gold is written by Santiago Gonzalez. Ready for the dash. And straight away, they're off. King Whistler got a nice start on the outside. Leads already. There is Crime of Passion against the fence. Easing into a nice position. That's Crime of Passion. Ignition Coil on the far side now. Takes up the running from Crime of Passion. Then comes the other one on the far side. Wild Excitement is also showing good speed as they move past the 900 meter marker. The back marker this time is Quick City. As they make their way up to the far turn. And the leader is Crime of Passion. Crime of Passion in second spot on the far side. That's signal alert then comes wild excitement in third ignition coil is starting to lose ground as Gabby's goal is making ground Gabby's goal moves into third spot just ahead of wild excitement with uh, just about 425 meters to travel and crime of passion has the call crime of passion leads by a length and a bit as uh, this one comes into the home stretch and lengthening his stride. That's Crime of Passion by two lengths. Signal alert back in second and third is Gabby's goal. Then comes Sacred Trust, the favorite, uh, as they come well inside the final 150 meters. And Crime of Passion has put this race to bed in some style. Crime of Passion wins and wins on challenge. Nice performance in second spot. Is well, I remember listening to the radio commentators before this race and they were saying that the younger horses may have to wait a season before becoming the equal of the older horses and so signal alert was pointed as perhaps the horse to win the race but not so crime of passion the youngster just a three-year-old won it well just impressively six and a half lengths this has been a commanding performance indeed authoritative might be a better word
Brian Budram Singh, the winning jockey, signal alert had to settle for second, and Sacred Trust could do no better than finished, finish in the fourth spot. Now, at the kinds of weights given the uh, conditions of racing out here at Santa Rosa Park, one would have thought that Sacred Trust would have been at a little bit of a disadvantage at the weights. He took along 55, but this uh, three-year-old, really impressive, lightweight, 49.5, well ridden and winning impressively, crime of passion. Douglas Henderson presented, of course, trophies and uh, as well hampers all around. Crime of Passion, the winner of race number seven. Raroma Stables, by the way, I should have acknowledged as the owners of Crime of Passion. Now let's move on to race number eight. We're getting closer to the uh, feature on the day's card, the Midsummer Classic. This one is called the Shandy, a field of uh, 16, so a full field for this 1350 meter trip. Ready? And away they go, slowly was Monica Dudu, well away was the problem solved on the outside as uh, well as uh, Just My Luck is also showing good speed, but here comes, uh, that's uh, Zip It Up, Zip It Up is the one who takes up the running now from Just My Luck in the second spot, then comes On My Own into third, then Best Defense fourth, on Bridal Way on the far side is following that one, then comes Damage Control, Monica Dudu has pulled her way into contention as uh, they move up the back stretch, racing in mid div at this time is the favorite Little Otis. Alongside him is Precious Diamond. Then comes the Howie as they move to the far turn. The leader is on my own narrowly. Here is on Bridal Way, drawing in quite well on the outside. In between them is Just My Luck. Then comes Zip It Up in fourth. In five is Best Defense. Then comes Precious Diamond. Little Otis has to find more speed at this time as they come out from the far turn, approaching the final 450 meters on Bridal Way is coming there to challenge on the outside on the inside is on my own precious diamond is also circling her field they straighten up now with 250 meters to travel on bridal way precious diamond on the outside zip it up is still in there with a chance as well as on my own on the inside they come inside the final 200 meters and the leader is precious diamond little Otis is now starting to find his best ride together with fire and faith but precious diamond has poached a lead of a length here is little Otis precious diamond holds on to win it by a half length. Precious Diamond used up those last precious uh, few meters to just hold on a really aggressive challenge from Little Otis, but in the end, Precious Diamond, ridden by Young Butcher, won it at 8 to 1, paid $9.05 to win. Little Otis at 5 to 2 was a half length behind. Fire and Faith finished in third place and on my own finished fourth. There is the young jockey. Uh, Daniel Butcher along with the trainer Lester Alexis. This one owned by Mr. Sidken, the syndicate, which includes uh, the late Sydney Otway and a nice young crowd in the winner's enclosure to celebrate the win by Precious Diamond, the six-year-old mayor by Royal Minister out of Dream Watcher won it in 126.2, owned, uh, I should say, owned by Mr. Sidken, but bred in Jamaica by the Ham Stables. There's Lester Alexis receiving his hamper. You're watching the winner's circle coming up next. The Midsummer Classic. There's nothing quite like being made to feel special. Like you're the top of someone else's personal hit parade. That's how First Citizens wants each and every customer to feel. Whether it's through innovative products and services, new technologies, or a simple smile. We're always thinking about ways to make your day better and your life a little easier. First Citizens, we put you first. Nestled on the spice-scented shores of Grenada's Grand Anse Beach, your next perfect getaway, the Spice Island Beach Resort. This family-run 64-suite boutique resort is set on 1,600 feet of white sand beach, captivatingly framed by the ideally located Sea Grape Suites, designed with breezy patios facing the ocean. Or, you can cool off in a private pool suite, tucked away with your own terraced gardens and personal swimming pool. All our suites are fitted with custom furnishings, fine Italian linen, and luxurious amenities. Rejuvenate the body in the 5,000 square foot Janissa Spa under the restorative powers of local herbs and spices. And at the Spice Island Beach Resort, you can savor our international cuisine infused with authentic local and Creole specialties. Experience the wonder of the Caribbean at Grenada's Spice Island Beach Resort. Visit us at www.spiceislandbeachresort.com. The Spice Island Beach Resort. 
your next perfect getaway. Together, these are high-class performers that set the standard for fuel-efficiency vehicles. At Toyota, we revolutionize the way you drive, whether it's on or off the road. Designed with intelligent safety features, the World Class Toyota Land Cruiser Prado and Hilux mark a new era in luxury vehicles. Together, they're two of a kind. Toyota, moving forward. The winner's circle it is, and we're up to the big one, the Carib Brewery Midsummer Classic, a Group 1 event, the second leg of the National Triple Crown. And for those of you who want to measure this in U.S. terms, this would be the equivalent of the Preakness, which was run off about a week ago. Sweet Genius is written by Manuel Melian. Here's Potter Gold. A lot of is thought of this horse. Emil Ramsamy is in for the day he rides. Chase the Dragon, Brian Budram Singh for trainer John O'Brien. This is Ready for the Road. Also, Goodwill Boy is in it. Goodwill Boy written by Shane Ellis. Prince Zeshan written by Nobel Abrigo for the Mohali Stables. War of Words, the raging favorite, Wilma Galvez. That was the winner of the first leg of the Triple Crown. Here is The Tactician, written by Alan Mirage. Zorro is written by Nicholas Patrick, horse number nine. Impressive feel, four unbeaten horses. Let's go for the call. Set for the Midsummer Classic, and straight away they're off. And a good start for Pot of Gold on the inside, as well as Ready for the Road. And Ready for the Road is the one who will take them along from Chase the Dragon. Pot of Gold is now back into third spot. And uh, here is uh, the tactician coming alongside Pot of Gold as they make their way to the first corner. Goodwill Boys on the inside of War of Woods. On the far side of War of Woods is Zorro. Then comes Prince Zishan, and the back marker is Sweet Genius. So that's the field in the Carib Brewery Midsummer Classic of 2013. And the leader is ready for the road narrowly by a half length in second spot. Just chase the dragon. Two lengths back to the third horse. That's Pot of Gold and Emil Ramsami. Then comes the other one. That's the Tactician, the favorite wall of woods. And the green colors on the far side of the Tactician. Then a length and a half back to Goodwill Boy. This one is racing in front of Prince Zisha and then Sweet Genius. Zora is now the back marker. They move past the 1,000 meter pole and the leader now is Chase the Dragon. Chase the Dragon takes up the running, opens up by a length, ready for the road on the inside in second. Then comes Spot of Gold and uh, tracking on the outside is War of Woods and the top two in the betting is now starting to make their move. That's Spot of Gold and War of Woods. Chase the Dragon though still has a narrow advantage. Back and forth is Goodwill Boy. Goodwill uh, Boy, then the other one is Prince Zishan. They come out from the far turn now with just about 500 meters to go in the Midsummer Classic. And War of Words is the one who has a narrow advantage and is traveling all over Pot of Gold at this time in second. Back in third now is Prince Zishan. Chase the Dragon is under pressure. Then Goodwill Boy in five. They turn into the home stretch now with 300 meters to go. And Galvez is asking War of Words now to go on and win his race. He opens up by a length and a half over Pot of Gold. Back in third is Prince Zishan. Inside the final 200 meters, they come. And and War of Words is straight and strong as he comes to the final 125 meters. Prince Zishan is trying in second place, but that will only be for second. That's because War of Words wins. Well, I think this has pretty much put the debate to rest. There was so much discussion about the merits of uh, War of Words as opposed to Pot of Gold, but I think we need now to uh, finally say that War of Words has proved to be much the better three-year-old, winning the second leg of the Triple Crown, so the Triple Crown is wide open. Prince Ishan got up for second and Pot of Gold had to settle for third. There was, this co of course, this discourse that Pot of Gold was improving mightily and looking bigger and better, but War of Words doesn't uh, look as great as Pot of Gold does, but certainly runs in the most stupendous manner. This was, in fact, and can only be described as a stupendous performance, three to five favorite, there he is in the striped shirt, Captain Anthony White. A proud man indeed. He was anticipating hungrily this day with members of his family. Trained by John O'Brien. Bred in Jamaica by Donald Williams. A gelding by War Marshal out of uh, Come Go With Me. And a really very impressive three-year-old. So now the Triple Crown remains wide open. There is John O'Brien, the trainer, receiving his token. War of Words won it in 201.4. The Carib Midsummer Classic then, won by War of Words, who has now won both legs of the Triple Crown. I want it! 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 Oh, blue and gold!
real Caribbean beer. We're into the final event today, which is race number 10, and a great, great end to the Midsummer Classic. This one is called the Guinness, race number 10. There are two scratches, Black Bart and Alexander. The bad news is that Black Bart collapsed and I think has been uh, euthanized, and uh, Alexander did not start a field of 13 for this final race. Ready, and straight away they're off and uh, very slow to leave was classic material as uh, well as Messi. Smartly away though is uh, Red Cloud. That's the one who leads from Gold Rush, the favorite on the far side. Then comes Van Wagen is racing in third. On the inside comes Messi in fourth. After that one is Parkman, then comes Edmundo. Then following Edmundo through his nature's reality. Classic material is now racing mid pitch as they make their way up the back stretch, moving past the 800 meter marker and Red Cloud is the one who leads. Red Cloud leads by a length. Here is Messi in the second spot, just ahead of Gold Rush on the far side in third. In fourth is Van Wagen, then two lengths back to Pacman at Mundo. Classic Material is racing in front of Aztec Gold. After that one is Supersonic. This is it, Red Howler. Nature's Reality won from last, and Trust and Confidence is the back marker. Out on the far turn they come, and Red Cloud is still the one to catch. Gold Rush is starting to draw in on the inside. Then comes Parkman on the far side, is into third spot just ahead of Van Wagen as they come inside the final 300 meters. And the leader is Red Cloud still. Red Cloud still has the call by a length and a half. In second spot is Parkman. Gold Rush is backing up on the inside. Then comes Van Wagen. Red Cloud leads by three lengths now with just about 100 meters to go. Parkman is trying, but this one will have to settle for second spot. That's because Red Cloud took them all the way around, goes on to score by two lengths in the well, the biggest surprise of the day was left for last race number 10. Red Cloud, ridden by Nadir Vargas, won it at 99 to 1, paid $126.95 to win and $17.75 to place. Pac Man got second, Bandwagon third, and Edmundo finished in fourth spot. The final time, 124. Nadir Vargas winning. He's had four rides for the day, and it's nice to see him at Winner's Enclosure. I'm very impressed with the improvement in his speaking of the English language. I had a conversation with him earlier in the day and he's very happy to have several rides and he's a, a very conscientious young man. Good for him and a big surprise. Red Cloud, trained by Rohit Dube, owned by Kenneth Garcia. This one by top of the class out of Traviata, so undiluted Trini, this horse Red Cloud. And great celebrations all around as Red Cloud wins the Guinness race number 10. We've had a very good day of racing out here at uh, Santa Rosa Park. It's been the Cary Brewery Midsummer Classic. War of Words keeps the Triple Crown alive. A great day of racing, wonderful weather, great company. Nice to have you with us on the Winner's Circle. I'm Tony Harford. We'll catch you next time.